Hey, it's Al here. I'm, I'm losing my voice already. I've been all, all morning chatting with people at the open house at the factory for track. Really fun talking to people. Not everybody got to see a demo or maybe you went to one of the open houses at, with one of the other track facilities. So I thought I'd record a quick screen share to show what's going on with Toolpath and, and track as a follow-up email for you. Uh, so if you missed me or you're talking here and you forgot what I said, I hope this video is a help. So let, let's jump into a little, a little tour of the product. Cheers. Well, I think I got my voice back and I'm, I'm back in my home office so we don't have the, the noise and commotion of the, the busy open house. And I thought I'd walk through some of the key points uh, that came up that, that many of you saw when I was giving the live demo. If, if you're anything like me, you forget what you saw or if you were inspired, you want to go show a friend. Um, so I'll walk through some of those things live. Uh, maybe that, uh, like me, you love being around people. Uh, maybe you're still not sure what you think or maybe you think we're totally bananas with our AI stuff. So I, I threw some fun emojis in the name of this project. Uh, I'm going to drag over an IGIS file of a part that I machined when I was at the factory on the machines a, a few weeks ago, so we can give some machining vintage at the, at the end and validate that <laughs> this was actually cut. Um, and, and now we can walk through what's happening. In this first step, it'll happen pretty quickly. But the system is playing the game, we call it the game of, of machining the part, in the way the computer scientists have, have programmed this AI, and I'm, I'm not a computer scientist, I'm a, I'm a machinist that gets to represent their work. But what it's doing here is saying, with all of these tools, machine this part as efficiently as possible. In this case, there was uh, 600 tools to work with. It's worked through and found out that it can machine all of the part with the exception of this uh, sharp corner, which is not machinable. This, this looks like DFM, but it's not, it's not traditional DFM in the sense that it's just looking at geometry. This is a result of what features could be machined with the given set of tools. Just so happens there's no tool that could machine that particular feature. Might be worth seeing the difference. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly jump to the tools tab where we can see the six of 600 tools that we used for this part. If I switch to a cutting config that had less tools, maybe represented the tools that are in my machine right now, um, you'll see a different result. In this case, I don't think I had drills uh, for the smaller holes, yeah, that's correct. Um, so now we can look at these smaller holes and I, I didn't have a drill in the smaller library. Uh, the smaller library, I think, had 12 tools in it, did it? Yeah. So three of the 12 tools machined most of the part, but it didn't have a tool to machine that portion of the part. Um, so I, th I think that's useful to, to keep in mind when you're using Toolpath. The first thing it's doing is becoming a no-go gauge for you of saying, am I fully prepared to make this part? Or am I not fully prepared to make this part? And that's that's critical for any efficient business. You want to be good at saying this is the right match for me and good at saying, no, that's not a match. Maybe the shop down the street's better at that work. And together we can we can partner and win and I'll, I'll win on the stuff that I'm best at and you win on the stuff that's your, your best at. So we can use Toolpath as a no-go gauge. Now, the next thing that Toolpath did is evaluate the, the part and decide that it was going to be done in two setups. Some parts will be three or four or five setups, um, but this part's a two-op two part. We can see the features that we're creating. I already showed you the tools that it selected. And, and now we get into the operations. The operations in Toolpath are similar to what you would call an event on the track machine. So you can see the geometry that we've identified. I'll show you this geometry again in a minute. So. Uh, just, just bear in mind, we can see the simplified geometry of the profiles that, that we need to machine. And each of these operations would, would pretty much map one-to-one -to, -one to an event on your track control. Because we figured out how to machine the part, and there's, there might be some changes but to, to, to fine-tune it, but we've largely fully machined the part, that means we can generate a pretty accurate estimate. The estimate isn't just taking cycle time or material removal volumes, but it's taking into account what would you charge each time you've got to have a human involved in the process. Maybe it's $100, maybe it's $30. Whatever that number is, what do you charge each time a human needs to walk up to the machine? Of course, it's a CNC machine, so then you can walk away and let it do its thing. So a critical part of the estimating process really is figuring out how much time does the human need to be involved in this whole process? 
The estimating tab gives us a quick result on the cost to make the part. And finally, today we take and we, this, this result and we export it um, to Fusion in this case. And you can see I've already exported it once. I, I've done this part a few times. I think maybe 20 or 30 times I did, did this part yesterday. Um, but we can, we can import the result from uh, Toolpath. This is going to happen live. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've done this part before. I did it in front of you. Um, but it's happening live here. And um, we're, we're now calculating and creating all of these operations. And again, for the track user, an operation in Fusion is effectively equivalent to an event. It was it's done in a way that would um, match exactly how a user would have created that same uh, operation inside of inside of Fusion 360, so the user can make their final tweaks on Fusion before uh, post processing it. Fusion's got a great post processor for the for the track machine. If you wanted to in Fusion. Um, you could go ahead and run a simulation and, and see what the material removal is going to look like. Uh, of course, you could do the same thing um, on your track control with a simulation there. So just to give you a little hint of where things are going, if we think of what a CAM system is, it, it's a, a way for a user to identify features, select that geometry, pick a tool to use, and set some toolpath parameters. Well, that's what the AI does. That's what our game did. Our game looked at the part. It picked the tools for the given geometry and set some parameters. Um, and so it changes the way we think about it. But in the terms of the geometry it picked, I, I showed you those uh, features before. Um, we're creating this sketch geometry in Fusion. The reason I tell you all that is it's obvious, it should now be obvious, it's not a major leap for us, and we're pretty excited to be talking to Track about this, of how do we then, instead of exporting to Fusion, how do we just take this geometry and use that to define a native Track event? Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's some of what we shared uh, at the Track event, the idea of going to Track events, and that's kind of a, a mind twist. Uh, so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it now and just show you some footage from when I cut the part. Cheers. It was good good meeting you.